<laughs> We're in farmland, Minnesota. Way outside of any major city you've heard of. We're not where they film Mighty Ducks. Instead, we're at Redhead Creamery, a family-owned dairy farm and a cheese plant. I'm meeting with Lucas and Elise, a really young married couple who raise their own cows and make their own cheese. Now they have 180 cows on their farm and the milk flows directly into their cheese plant. Let's find out how they do it. Can you walk us through like kind of the life of a cow, where does it start? and how they end up here and everything. Sure, well, cows have very basic needs all the way through life. They want their feed and they want their water and they want a warm, dry place to live. And so our calves start off in preschool. There they're in a hutch by themselves because yeah. unlike you and me, they were born with no immunity whatsoever. So we got to give them good quality milk and keep them away from the elements so they're not picking up any diseases. Then at about two months of age, they can get their first taste of water and grain, because otherwise they're just on milk. And then they're in elementary school. They're there on our farm for about three, four months right. until they move up to middle school and then puberty hits. Okay. And uh, there they're going through puberty. We try to leave them alone, let them rest, you know, work their stresses out. Yeah. And then over in high school, uh, they're about 10 months of age and we watch them, make sure their things are looking good, both health-wise, uh, getting good nutrition. And then uh, the vet checks them for their reproduction. And at about 13 or 14 months of age, if they're big enough, we will, that's when we'll breed them and they'll set them up to have their first calf at two years of age. And then they begin milking and they'll milk for 10 months. Uh, some of that milk will go to the calves that we have to feed on our farm, yeah. but most of it will go to all of us to enjoy on our pizzas or ice cream in your freezer. Now that I'm seeing all this, like it's all female in here. How, how, where, who's, who's humping these cows? Like how, <laughs> how, how, how are they getting pregnant? Right, well, uh, we do what's called artificial insemination. Basically what we're doing uh, is first of all we need to select good bulls. That's the most important part of the process. Uh, we got to select a bull that fits with that cow. And okay. so if a cow is maybe too tall, we'll select a shorter bull. Or too short, we'll select a taller bull. Uh, a good udder is very important. Uh, and also good feet and legs are very important. Got it. And you usually can spot one ovulating. Are they like trying to get frisky with each other or something? Yeah, generally speaking, uh, a cow will jump on top of another cow. And the one on the bottom is typically ovulating. And I mean, you guys have like a really unique, cool, homey farm. So can you tell me like what's different about you guys? So we send our milk through what's called a plate cooler. And so that's instantly cooling down the milk. We uh -huh. get it from 101 degrees, which is the cow's body temperature, to 55 degrees within just seconds after the milk coming out of that cow. So that can add shelf life to that milk sitting on the shelf yeah. uh, in your store, uh, way more than it was decades ago. And it can also, uh, it limits, what it's doing is it's limiting any bacteria from growing at those temperatures between 60 or 80. We've also just been in a cookbook called the Dairy Good Cookbook that's been put together by dairy farmers. Oh, There's that, dairy yeah. farmers in all 50 states and the 45,000 of us or so uh, all came together and made one big cookbook. We're on page 163, check it out. And another cool thing we're doing on the farm is we make cheese. So we've got the crops from just feed away going through our cows, turning that into milk, and then a few feet later, uh, it's turned into cheese in our own cheese plant, which is what my wife runs. That's sick. Can we go check that out right Let's now? Let's go do it. Yeah. This is my parents' dairy farm. They started it from scratch. They grew up on dairy farms, and so I now live in the house I grew up in, across nice. 50 feet away. So after we pasteurize, then I cool the milk down, and then I pump it into here, and then I add culture. So when we're making our aged cheddar, the whole process is the same, but we put the curd in one of these, and then we put a lid on top, and then we set it we set it sideways on that press. We press it overnight, and then the next morning we take them out and put them in the aging rooms. This is where all the Lucky Linda aged cheddar ages. We also have some cloth-bound cheddar, um, but you can't tell because they're all covered with the same molds. The youngest stuff we have in here, I think I have some that was made in June. This is an April batch. But the oldest stuff I have is from last December. So what are the rules of aging cheddar though? So if, if they can last forever, like do they have to be at this temperature for it to last forever? You want it in a, like... it's an optimal range. Um, and it also has a lot to do with the dew point and humidity. Because okay. you can only manage the dew point, but the humidity is what causes the mold to adjust. And that's where the magic happens. Redhead Creamery continues to grow. 
shipping cheese all over Minnesota and several of the neighboring states. All right, so looking at all this cheese, I, I need to try it. Can we, can we do a little bit of sure, this? Yeah. Or? Has no salt on it. But good though. We ate through the entire cheese collection, reminiscing over all the cool cow facts I just learned. I'm a regular cheese expert now. Thanks, Redhead Creamery. And we're not supposed to be in here for too long without masks, sir. Right. Because then you're going to pass out because there's natural ammonia in here. <laughs> and I'm high as balls <laughs> at this point. I haven't smoked a thing, but this is getting high off cheese. That's our new segment. Oh, this is this is where we die. <laughs> this is where we die. <laughs> oh, 